Welcome to our eighth oral history program. Today we're going to share some time with Mrs. Helene Miro. She's, she's quite a remarkable lady. I say remark remarkable because there are not many people, they're 90, 91 years, right? Yes. They can take care of themselves, live alone, take care of themselves. Of course, drive her son Harold. Drive a car. And she drives a car also. And her son Harold and Betty Miro, of course, keep an eye on things. You come from a long, a long line of people that, that uh, have lived in their 90s, haven't you? Yes. I know that because you're a direct descendant of William Kutcher, the, uh, the companion of Father Isaac Joe, that, that was the young priest that was martyred by the Mohawk Indians in Orrisville in the 17th century. And, and Kutcher was his companion, but he escaped and went off to and build his family in Quebec City. Uh, but you always lived in Rouse's Point, haven't oh, you? Oh, yes, yes. Can you describe that home to us, the first home? You well, had? this is the first home. I was born here in this uh, hotel, and I'm in the baby carriage there. Oh, for heaven's sake, you're way down in here. <laughs> yes. This was called the Frontier House. Yes. All right. Your family ran the business? Y yes, mm -hmm. yes. And next of all, you. this looks familiar. The A House. You no, know? yes. Yes, this is the, the A, A House. house. It hasn't changed much since today, no, has it? I lived there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, we went to the Holland. This My father place. ran the Holland house. He rented it from a man that came from Augensburg and owned it. And uh, we lived there quite a few years. I must have been nine, ten years old when we live there. That was about 1900 then, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then... And then you moved on to... We moved up to the winter. And that's the way it was then. It was we, a beautiful I hotel. lived there for seven or eight years. You've told me so many exciting things about the parties they had. Who yes. owned the ho Who owned the Windsor, by the way? T.M. Leonard, a millionaire. He was from New York City. And he owned this hotel. And he wanted it. It had been closed for many years. And he wanted it reopened, and he sold it to my father. And of course, the land now is all divided. My father owned the point that Walter Obrey owns way down there, where the Racines have their oil uh, filling station up there. That belonged to my father. That was the property of the Windsor, the old Windsor. And then. And back where they have their uh, garage, that belonged to the Windsor. But there was a nice park in front there with a fountain and a summer house. And then in back of the hotel at the Windsor, there was an, an um, ice house. And in the winter, my father, or sum, uh, summer, my father had to contract for a contractor to come in to fill that ice house because we had no electric refrigerators or nothing like that. And uh, in back of that ice house was the laundry for the winter. And you worked there when, as a young girl, yes, didn't you? Yes, I, I used to help you. out with mangling towels because they're in that laundry there was big dryers that they'd hang the clothes on bad days and build wood fires in stoves to dry this clothes. And across from that, about 50 feet or so across, was a small house, and that was where the lights came from, the gas. And my father used to go out there always, it was at night, and he'd hang a lantern on the laundry or the ice house, and he'd cross over, and there were some barrels or something they had to turn to keep that going, keep the power going until we had electricity. So that's... <laughs> Must have been quite, a, quite, a, quite an effort to, to have for so many rooms. You said a great many people came in the summer and quite oh, well yes. to do. And they were all mostly people that had a lot of money. They were TM's friends. And they'd come with their families and there were those that had children had maids. And they would uh, have suites they would have always three, four rooms. And, but TM came up in the spring, early, and he'd stay to help out, and uh, he lived up the street 
with his wife, and he had one son, Harry. And uh, did he build a beautiful white home that we I call the Leonard home? The Leonard home. And we see him. Yeah. And on the Fourth of July, he used to have a big um, float that he'd set out in the lake, and his son would uh, give us a show of firecrackers and uh, all kind of fireworks. But his son got hurt very badly one night. With the firecrackers? Yes. Okay. One of those, um, I don't know what you call them now, they, they exploded in his face. Oh, terrible. And it blinded him. So they never had, we had never had any more fireworks. TM destroyed that. But uh, then at the hotel at uh, Pier, Oh, this is an interesting picture. She's, we're still at the hotel, and you yeah. were young, and he, well. We used to go swimming. My father set that pier out, and the neighbors and friends would come over, and uh, the uh, guests that wanted to go swimming, we had a place for swimming, and, and also boats. But they were just motor, small motor boats, and not like now. Well, there was a ferry boat. there also, wasn't there? Where there? There was a ferry at one time in that area, wasn't there? Yes, but that was in back of what is uh, now um, where Wes had his place oh, down in, there. In that in area? In the village, right, yes, down street here. Used to cross over to uh, Isle of Mont, and there's a windmill over there now. That oh, yeah. mill. Mm -hmm. It's, it's called Windmill Point, isn't yes. it? Yes, mm -hmm. and that's where we used to land. But that's as near as you got to any town. You'd have to go to Albert, you know. I remember you telling me when you lived at the Windsor, of course you were going to school then. Yes. And I can still visualize you going to school. Tell them how you get, went to school, how you got to school. Of course, I said... Well, you, in, the, in the winter there was a, a man by the name of Beersford. There was Harry Beersford and Mary. And the father had a tombola. And uh, he had uh, nice fur rugs in the bottom, and he'd pick up all the kids and bring us to school, and he'd wait for us to bring us home. And that was just uh, because he was just a very nice little man. <laughs> uh, tell me the other way you went, though. I mean, the, the, when you didn't ride the tombow with your skates, tell me. Well, I, I used to go down to so shore, well. and I'd put my skates on, and I'd skate down as far as the anchorage now. It was a Millard, owned by the Millard's Lumber Mill. And I'd skate as far as there, take my boots off, and, and I'd walk up to school, the old high school that is part of theirs now. now and nowadays they won't let the children even walk to school. No. You were skating on the ice every day. Yes, it's we amazing. skated. We had to make our own skating rinks, and a lot of the boys and men had ice boats. And we used to ride on those ice boats, and that was quite a thrill. <laughs> You'd go way out, the channel was open, they'd go right out next to the channel and back again. I always visualize an ice boat with just one or two people. You said a lot of people around them. Well, they had a great big one that would take six or more. Yeah. It must have been exciting. But when they'd holler, duck, you'd want to duck. Because I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> shift that uh, sail over and you got it in the head. <laughs> we must have had a much colder winters in that time than yes, we have now. Yes, yeah. huh? they were very mm -hmm. cold. And you told me this is your last place that you, your yes. family owned, right? Yes. This that is on the left side of the main, yes. which our main street now. My father bought the old Van Busker home here. The first building, right? Yes. And it's there now. It's very... Well, this is Pearl, excuse me. This is coming, yes. going south, that'd be on Pearl, the other side. And the old Van Busker house he bought, and he put that square front on and fixed the place up, and we then we opened a restaurant. And my father had very good business. You were there. in business all the time, weren't you? Always. And uh, they went out of business because I got married. Oh, I see. <laughs> later years. How old, were you, married, you, how old they, were you when you were married? Nineteen. Nineteen. Yes. Yeah. It was 19. quite young. Of course, that wasn't young for that time, was it? No. Like most women. No, it wasn't. But it's still too young. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have another interesting picture here of, of early Ross's Point with the, the cars. The and cars. The men in the too. community would be interested in that. That's when those old cars, and they had no sides, you know, just the top, and they used to snap 
the side down for protection in the coal, and they all had goggles on and, and long white coats, you know, and, and those white caps. And they went through the village, quite a few hundred cars. Yeah, this is also, this is another picture of the same scene, just a different way. And we also have another one <coughs> showing the street. You notice the road, the, well, it's not a dirt road, but gravel road, you might say. And well, there were dirt roads dirt in those road. days. Oh, it was all dirt roads. There was no tarmac or anything. We can see how our community has changed a lot. <coughs> You, you said you were married at 19, and we, we, when we were talking previously, you mentioned how, how hard you worked in your home and how things were different compared to the people nowadays, how you saved. You well, to, we had to save. We didn't do like, we didn't have the things they have today. We had no wash machines. We had no uh, electric irons, of course, and uh, nothing electric. Ice boxes, of course, with ice, and... Uh, that's what all we had, and we had to say we couldn't buy anything else because we didn't have the money. The and pay it, was small. And, and you also mentioned about saving, how, how you prepared for winter. I thought that was interesting. So people, so few people do that nowadays. Yeah, well, we, we couldn't buy anything in the stores. That is, like, you couldn't even buy, uh, well, you could buy potatoes, but my husband used to go up west, and uh, he'd fit, take the seat out of his back of his car. And uh, he'd get I don't know how many bushel of potatoes for my mother, my people, and for his people and ourselves. And that did the winter. And of course, people used to hang vegetables in their basement, like cabbage and and uh, turnips down in the basement because we couldn't buy anything like that in the stores. Stores didn't know we didn't even have fruit in our stores then. Couldn't buy fruit. We waited for the refrigeration to come, didn't we? Yes. Electricity and all that. Yes. We couldn't have it. Um, we have some other pictures here, the interesting people in the community. This is, a, I know the hockey, the hockey buffs in Ross's Point would be interesting, interesting to see this picture. But there's, uh, there's no date on it, but it must be the early 1900s. You remember some of these people, Harleen? Well, let me see. This is Ed Quain, I know you've told me. Yes. This was your husband, Harry. Yes. And this was, um, I can't remember, what's down here? No, I don't know him. This is George McChesney. George McChesney. And Rosie, Rosie. Tran. Rosie. Mr. Tran. Yes. Uh -huh. No, I didn't and know And Bill Bender, many. many people probably yes. remember Bill Bender. I remember right him. Right here. Yes. And this tall gentleman, I don't know him. And Fonzo Jabot, that's quite a name, Fonzo yes. Jabot. And we have the famous basketball team. This was dated 1905, 1906. And keep moving this around. This is Joe Casey, Mr. Casey, and Harry Miro, her husband, or to be, well, to, to be. And this is Mr. Brothers. Bill Brothers. Brothers in the, Blonde person, you you know the blonde person right here. Light Hall. He was the Light Hall boy that lived here, and Professor Richmond. He was the professor of the high school then. Just just had five on the team. In other words, <laughs> <laughs> while we're on the teams, here's an interesting team. This baseball season starting, and here's the Mr. Jim uh, John Barn. John Barn, oh. yes. And uh, that's George Letourneau. Arthur Brothers, Bill Brothers. Um, this is La Fountain, Eddie La Fountain from Champlain. We've got to tip it this way because he can't see it. And uh, I don't know. Uh, Gene Strong, Bill, and uh, oh, Slingsby, Will Slingsby. He was a famous name in Rose's Point. Wasn't yes. He? he ran the store for many years. Yes, well, and that's Gene Strong there and the others. Were I they don't a successful know, team, too. do you remember? Yeah. Were they a successful team? Oh, yes, very. And Ken well, Wiley was on that, too, yes, wasn't he? Yes, Ken Wiley was think, on there. But I believe he's, he's a smaller well, man over here. Yeah, he's not in that picture. Well, 
we have more pictures. While we're at it, we might as well continue with the pictures. This is an interesting picture. When I was younger myself, I can remember the home talent plays. Yeah. But this is another really early home talent play. Yeah. It shows the people dressed, and Mrs. Celine herself. And, and uh, who was your partner? Uh, John Hapgood. Uh huh. Celine Sweet. Different yeah. people. They're all town people, but in front here, of course. They're did you put this on to make money for an association, yeah. or? Yes, we did. We mm -hmm. used to put that, and we'd go different places, go up to Moore's, and oh. sometimes Champlain put on the show. Real professional because players. Because they saw it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was. Oh, well, look at here. Here's, well, is that, it was held yeah. at Coacher's Opera House, 1915. Yes, that was Uncle Wolford's Opera House. He built that where the... Uh, well, what's the uh, Legion here? It's American yeah. Legion now. He built that and had an opera house, and that was our movies. We'd go to movies there. You've seen a yeah. lot of changes in there many years, haven't you? Oh, yes, yes, a lot You've of seen changes. television come in? Just think of the uh, changes you've had. Yes, television and... Radio, and too, uh, right? Radio, old, oh, yes, radio. You remember the first radio you had? Yes, we had a, a small one, and, and uh, it was a little bit of a thing, and... My children used to rush home from school and sit in a rocking chair to uh, the three of them and get into a big rocker and listen to the program because it was really something to have that then. What was the name of it? You remember the names of the program? Well, I used to listen to Chan Do the Magician. I couldn't yes, wait to hear that one. Yes, and was a woman, an old woman that sold, that had soap. I know we <laughs> hear that quite a bit. Orphan Annie, of course. Oh, that was a good we one. always Annie. had Orphan Annie. <laughs> Different programs like that. Do you remember uh, anything about the World War I? Yes, because my brothers were in it, and my brother's buried in uh, France or Paris now. My mother went over. And here's a picture the of the whole town. I went to see her off. She was a gold star mother in that time. And she's she's standing by the train, of course, and her husband. This is Wolford Kutcher. I remember his face. Yeah. Notice and the I children on the, po the post. This was D&H Station, right down where yes. I live, right? Did she stay a long time in Paris, or just? A well, the, the length of the trip, you see, it was over a week, a week or so. Yes. They you told gone. me about uh, when they he went over by boat. My boat. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. Of course. Over. Of course they did. Oh, <laughs> in that time there was no plane, mm -hmm. but they went over by a, a, a boat, and uh, they took them all over. You know, mm -hmm. the, the big shows and everything. I know they took them to. My mother always laughed, and they took them to Moulin Rouge in Paris, and she was. Uh, and uh, in with a woman that was a minister's wife. And when they took them to Moulin Rouge, well, there it was uh, sort of, uh, the girls didn't have much of anything on and it was different than here. And uh, in fact, they were, they were bare. Uh oh. And <laughs> their breasts were painted. And then they, when they went out, they all turned around, flipped their skirts up. And oh, this woman was shocked. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but my mother laughed <laughs> because she, I'm like her. <laughs> I would have laughed too. <laughs> well, why not? Huh? Yeah. Wouldn't but, if you were. Uh, she had a bad trip over, though. It was very rough, but she managed to get there and buy safe. And so, uh -huh. She enjoyed it very much. Yes. I always remembered her gracious home that she had. You know, yes. she lived upstairs near the lake. Uh, they, tell us about the the um, her son. It was, they thought he was a they thought he was just a regular soldier. Yes, the, but he was in the Air Corps. He was a pilot, and he flew with General Foss as an interpreter, because he could speak a little French, not very much, but enough. But we never knew it until he died, and the army sent they or the, they sent his clothes home, and it was all leather, and. Uh, the hats and everything that, and his buddy that was with him came to visit my mother and he told her, I promised Harry I would visit his people if I outlived him or if he outlived me, he was to go to my people. So he came 
And he said, oh, yes, Harry was a pilot. And that's the way we found out that he was a pilot. We never knew. My other brother was a sergeant. He was stationed in Chattanooga, Tennessee, all during this uh, terrible epidemic of flu. And that's how my brother died of the flu. They didn't have anything to uh, cure it, and he died of pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So, But a few men did that, didn't they? Yes. I mean, uh, Ross's point is always uh, thinking, well, if we're thinking a lot about the fort we've lost, more or less. Do you remember the Fort Montgomery the way it was? Oh, yes. I used to go there with my father. We lived at the Holland, and that was a Sunday trip we took down to the fort. And uh, Sergeant Moore was stationed here then, and he lived partway between the road and to the fort. And we used to always stop and visit them. He had his family, two daughters and wife, and they live right there. Well, he kept the cannonballs shining and in pyramids inside. And we used to think it was great to go over the moat. That moat was closed all the time. And uh, my brother used to climb up into the holes where the cannons were. But uh, the, uh, Sergeant Moore took care of that for a long time until the Sergeant Burt came in. There's just a hole where the house was now. Yes, yes. That's I, I've right. heard that there was a large sundial in the center, in the center of the fort. Do you yes. remember that? Yeah. Oh, yes. We saw that. Yes. Anything else you'd like to tell us about Ross's Point in the early days? Well, you think life's better now than it was those days? Oh yes, oh yes, life is much better. Uh, we do, we don't have boardwalks and dirt roads. <laughs> we have a beautiful community, don't we? Yes, we do. Lake. We have a nice town. The oral history pro project in Ross's Point. We're interviewing Helen Helene Miro, and she's been telling us about all her experiences and memories of days past. What made life better 50 years ago, or do you think it was better? What they had do you make life, do you think what made life better or was it better fifty years ago? Well, I don't things were at a slower pace or it, well, wasn't at a slower pace, but I think life is better now. You just say that's right, you just yes, say that. Much better now <laughs> because we have electricity, we have everything now. Mm hmm And uh Is being older like you expected it to be? Is pardon? being older like you expected it to be? Well, no, it, it, they keep <laughs> advancing more in everything, and it's uh, they're going very fast. I think in life, and you have reasonably good too, health, though. Too fast. Well, yes, I. I guess I'm like my my people. I live to be too old. Oh no, not not as someone as attractive as you are. I can't be too old. <laughs> uh, you have quite a quite a family now, haven't you? How many children? You had three children, and how many I, grandchildren? I had three children, and I have twenty-one grandchildren and great-grandchildren. That's remarkable. Isn't yes, it? I have twenty-one, and they're all so nice to me. Well, they so can't help it. You're so nice me. yourself. Very, very good to me. Last year at the Anchorage on your ninetieth birthday, we had a, quite a party. Yes, yes. I was so glad to be there. Yes, and this ninety-first birthday, they gave me. Quite a party at home and at the Anchorage, and they're mm -hmm. all very, very good to me. Well, I good, appreciate it very much. But I still like to live alone mm -hmm. because I can walk around and I can do things that I, I feel I'm not upsetting people and do as I want to do. <laughs> and I like that. You enjoy your TV, I know that. Oh, yes, I do. I have my soap operas on. And Thank goodness for soap and, operas. Huh? <laughs> and I like uh, all uh, the uh, weather and the business going on. I always look forward to that, to those programs. You kept yourself alert. You know exactly what's yes, going on, I don't do. you? Yes, I like to know what's going on, even if I am 91 years old. <laughs> what are you most proud of doing in your long, long, happy life? Well, I don't know. I couldn't tell you much about that. I think bringing I, up a fine family. Bringing up my children, trying to be, to make good children out of them, and I was always good to them. See that.
And uh, my husband always said when my children were sick, he said, you're more sick than they are. <laughs> because <laughs> I couldn't help it though, but I wanted to be a nurse when I was younger and my people wouldn't let me go. No, you were, they were too busy. You were too busy in your well, restaurants, weren't and, you? No, I wanted to go when I was very young mm -hmm. to be a nurse over to Burlington. They would have taken me and I'd have finished my schooling and then been a nurse. My people, oh no, I couldn't leave home. That wasn't the style then. No, but you let, your daughter went for you, didn't she? Marian, yes. Marion went overseas too, didn't she? Oh a, yes, uh, she was in, for the full duration of the war. She was in Hawaii. She was supposed to have landed in the Philippines, but that's when General MacArthur evacuated. So they landed them in uh, Hawaii. In, uh, Hawaii. And, in fact, uh, you had all your children in the service at the same oh time, yes. didn't you? I had the three. I had a lot of, uh, a lot of sorrow. A lot of heartache was oh, before. Yes. yes. Young I pe did. People have it easier now, don't they? And my older son, the Harold was in the, uh, in the Air Corps, and he couldn't go overseas because he had a mastoid when he was young, and he didn't have hearing. He had only hearing in one ear. This must have been John, you mean? No, that's Harold. Well, I thought he that. went to Germany. Yes, no, John went to Germany. Harold went just down here to uh, Newburgh. He was stationed there, mm -hmm. and he was in the Air Corps. And mm -hmm. John was in infantry, and he walked, as he says, every foot across Germany. I imagine. He says he landed, and he was stepping over bombs. They mm -hmm. had to be careful. And uh, then he went right to the front, all the way. Hmm. He's lucky that he hasn't anymore. He's not well, but he gets along. They were all happy over it anyway. Yeah. Turned out the way it did. You have a lot of happy memories, haven't you? Yes, yes. You have anything else you'd like to, if you had something to, if you had your, would you have done things differently if you had your life to live over? Would you do anything differently, you think? Probably. Well, you know. Yes, you just said you'd probably been a nurse if you had yes, a chance. Yes, I would have been a nurse, and, and that's what I really wanted to be, but my daughter took my place. So oh, that's good. <laughs> I think that's about all John. Well, very glad to have you today. Well, very interesting, Helene. I hope I didn't do too bad. Well, of course you didn't. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank Champlain New Channels for putting our program on. Thank you very much. Thank you.